and gases too. So should we let the big oil companies drill offshore to alleviate pain at the pump? And if so, who's best positioned to do all that offshore drilling? Joining us now is Chris Edmonds from FIG Partners Energy Research Group and David Callahan, senior fellow at Demos. David Callahan, you don't want him to drill. Tell us why. Well, all that drilling wouldn't make much of a difference, I'm afraid. There was a study in 2009 that found that if you open up all the coast to drilling, it would produce another 500,000 barrels of, uh, of, of oil uh, a day by 2030. That's not going to make a big dent, given that we are now consuming 20 million barrels a day. You know, the, the, the price of, of oil is, is determined by the overall global supply, and changing domestic production is not going to really uh, change things very much. Then, Chris, why do you say it's a no-brainer that big oil should, should drill more? Well, I think the issue is, is very clear, and I think that we need to explore new horizons, which one of those primary new horizons is the Deepwater Gulf of Mexico. And as long as we do it responsibly, that will be a major source of oil for the United States for years to come. It's not going to happen overnight. It's a five-year plan, but every year we wait, it takes another five years to get there. And we should be tapping that resource, understanding that resource, and harnessing that resource starting today, not a year from now or two years from now, because it will have make a major difference in production for the United States. We have a oil import problem, not an oil problem. We need to begin to resolve that problem at home, number one. David, uh, when Shell Oil was cut down by the EPA, stopped out their Alaska offshore drilling, Shell reported that there were 27 billion barrels of oil that they were being stopped out on. That's a big number, is it not? Isn't that the sort of thing we need? You know, I just really don't think it's going to make much of a difference. I should point out that domestic production is near a 20 a year high right now, up a, a million and a half barrels just from uh, 2005. So we're, we're we're doing a lot of domestic uh, production, but it's not making a big difference. The real driver here, uh, short term, of course, it's that war in Libya, but the big driver here is China. China's insatiable uh, demand for oil, it has it, its consumption per day has doubled since uh, 2001. It's probably going to double again in the next 10 years. Uh, it's going to rival the United States. India's oil consumption is up 50%, uh, uh, 25 percent uh, as well in the last decade. I mean, these emerging countries are really driving the picture here. And that domestic production is just not going to make much of a difference. We need to mm -hmm. really be looking at how to shift to uh, more fuel-efficient vehicles. Seventy percent of all the oil we consume goes for cars and trucks. Right. And uh, if we don't deal with that, it's not going to change the picture. Chris, but, but, yeah, go ahead. How, and I also want to ask you, Chris, Larry, how you play this from an investment point of view. Yeah, let me just let me respond to that just quickly. If that's exactly the reason we need to be exploring more in the U.S. and in new frontiers like the Deepwater Gulf, because if we don't do that, we're reliant on foreign oil that is the competition is increasingly stiff from China and India, and we put our hands in a much more perilous basket or perilous hands of, of others that produce that oil that are fighting for it for demand from China and India and the like. I think the way you play the Gulf is you look at the deep water drillers like Transocean and Ensco, which certainly benefit if we open up the Gulf and have more activity there. As do the service companies, Halliburton was very bullish on their conference call about deep water activity and another smaller company, Hornbeck Offshore, which has boats. And then I think you look at the independent companies that have more dynamic growth prospects rather than ExxonMobil. That would be a company like an Apache, mm -hmm. like an Anadarko, or smaller like an ATP Oil and Gas. Okay, Chris and David, thank you very much for joining us today. When we come back, Jane Jace.